Okay, so we have this class and we have two more classes. You had a paper due on November 20th. Um, I expect everyone to be ready to do a PowerPoint presentation at the next class on Sunday, right? No, Monday, Monday morning, whatever. Sunday, Professor. Sunday? Sunday. Okay, next, next Sunday, right? Okay. And for today, I wanted you to start thinking about your final paper and start doing the research and report on one article. So you might end up not using this article in your final paper, but I wanted to give you time to start looking at all the dimensions of what could be in your final research paper. I want you to start thinking about what it is, which goddess or goddesses, right, are most compelling to you, because it should be pretty obvious by now that someone who really cares about kids should go into education or, or healthcare, something where she's actually gonna be dealing with children in some way. Um, someone who is like Hera should be thinking about how to create a higher quality of life. So there's a lot of NGOs that involve the kind of activities that a Hera woman would do, which is um, empowerment of women. Um, she would want to be a role model of a woman like Melinda Gates, who obviously has her position and her money because of her husband, but she's very concerned with women's empowerment. So, you can, inv you can think about how I would want to do what Hera does, but not in the capacity of being a wife. Maybe if I end up getting married, I'll do that. But I want to think about it in terms of figuring out what organizations, what United Nations programs, they could be very local organizations in your village or where you live. So this would be one advantage of actually having been sent home is finding out what uh, government run organizations, local maybe business funded organizations, local businesses <clears throat> who that actually also have women's empowerment um, activities funded by the business, what United Nations uh, is doing, either in your local area, in your country or your region. So then Artemis would be sustainability and all of these ultimately relate to equality, women's equality and sustainability. So our Artemis would be particularly focused on that, but she would also need to know which government organizations, which international, national, government, private sector, private public. Um, so you can get this picture in your head of here you are, you're in this country, you have this thing you care about, and you're going to go, you went abroad to go to school. You're going to, I think a lot of you go to grad school. You get all the credentials you need. And you go back home and link into what's there. So this paper is to help you have already done some research about what is there. And also, how do I get access to it? Um, uh, for those in Bangladesh, 
looking at the Brock website extensively, right? You could look at a lot of articles or branches of it so that when you come back to Bangladesh, you really have a lot of knowledge already about what you're coming back to. Um, if you are a Persephone type, you wanna be working on child marriage or rape or abusive issues in your country. What is Brock doing? What's the UN doing? What is the government doing? What in your village? Is there a group of people that's coming together that is trying to expose this or be a shelter kind of place for girls that are getting abused? Um, and you can be the facilitator. Like if there are, if there are just family members that know this is going on, how can you set up like a community-based organization or group, and then you can get them in touch. You can maybe get funding from Brock or somewhere else. You can be the leader, right? Someone's got to lead. Someone's got to take the initiative because a lot of people, uh, you know, complain or gossip or whatever, but especially women, they, they, don't do anything or they feel powerless like they want to and they can't so you're going to be the one who's going to hopefully be the empowered woman who can come and empower others but you can't unless you get a lot of knowledge right you really have to get a sense of what's there and um after when you're in grad school i would assume you'll get more knowledge and maybe some contacts. But this is just the first step in learning how to think about, you know, where you're headed and how, how you can get help, you know, how you can seek out help. And um, this paper could, this research could be that you saw on the, you're looking at research and you're finding out there's a problem you were not even aware of that's huge. And uh, a lot of you did that on your earlier research paper. It's just, I want it to be extended so that you can um, get a much broader network in your head about how to empower women. Um, so if it's Athena, it would be, it could be the laws how to change the laws. It could be how to, what institutions have been set up by the government. It could be institutions that are set up by corporations, uh, private public. So it could be institutionally based, or it could be, um, uh, let's see, laws, institutions, <coughs> um, uh, working with elected officials, you might want to get involved in elections. I don't know, because I don't know how corrupt they are or how marginalized you are. Um, and that's a judgment call for you. But, you know, someday there could be a someone campaigning for a position, it might be a local position, you know, the city council, I don't know what sort of government levels you have, but we have mayors, city councils, all this stuff. You can run for that if you want, but you start out contacting these people, finding out what they do, finding out what you could get them to do. Uh, if, again, I don't know how your country works, but if they're running for a position and they have to make a public statement about their concerns, you know, you could try to convince one of them that they should be concerned about this and they're gonna set up an institution to take care of it or a helpline, a crisis helpline. Um, that would be more of an Athena thing. Um, the artists would be the same sort of institutional structures for sustainability. She would set up a recycling center, right? That would be a major Artemis type of event, right? 
um, activity. Athena, Artemis, Aphrodite, of course, is the arts. So already in your villages, there are probably women who do crafts, art. So you can find out um, how that works in your village, or you can find, and then you could find out how, what women are, first of all, giving them opportunities to create crafts, have enough money up front to start their business, and then um, sell it, you know, give opportunities to get a market, to get a public face, um, and then um, they can start working together and build, um, you know, a company based on artwork. So their main passion is the artwork. Somebody else has to come along and help them with the institutional stuff. Um, let's see. So there's Aphrodite and there's Demeter, the mother, Hera, and then there's Hestia, who would be the one who would ex try to explain to people how it all fits together. So um, trying to convince people to change and explaining why, explaining all the ways that women are oppressed and then what you think could be done. So helping people envision a better world for their children is really important because otherwise people are afraid of change and they won't change. And not to change at this point in history is really to go backwards. So if you would like, there are a lot of articles about that here, um, out there about how the best way for a nation's economy to develop is to educate and empower women. And, um, you can include that in your research. That's a very Hestia type of thing, right? To look at the whole picture. Um, a Hestia thing would just say, okay, here's how it fits together. And I don't have any suggestions for what institutions to set up or what laws to make or change. Or, you know, I'm, I'm not into the details. I'm just into seeing the big picture and trying to convince people that they need to change. Um, so I hope, you know, that, that I, I'm sure, I know I said this last time, I just wanna make sure that everybody sort of gets why it might seem like it's repeating. You had a research paper and then you had your goddess's paper. Why do you need another paper? It's, it's just to give you time to spend more time pursuing these things and preparing you for the rest of your education at AUW. You can contextualize the education, can sort of fit it into what you think you want, and then you can change what you want. But you can't change what you want until you first make up your mind about something and start to design the whole map, the whole network. Um, image of a network. And then if you take another class and you go, oh, that's, that's what I really want, then that's fine. You know what to do. What's the next step? How do you, and then eventually, of course, you'll find out um, about graduate schools, which graduate school to go to, but you're not going to know which graduate school to go to unless you know what you want, right? What you want to study. Or AUW also has opportunities for a semester abroad. And um, I helped students write their proposals for wanting to go abroad. And those are much more, um, those proposals are much more compelling if you can give very specific reasons for why this is what I want. This is what your program has to offer. I'm the one you should choose over other people. That's when you're applying for anything, you must make the case 
that this program and me fit together in a way that the other applicants don't. So I do think you need to, you know, come with a pretty clear idea of how you would make such an argument. Um, so that is, that's in general what I'm looking for today. And I hope that all of you found something. Um, and then next time you give your formal presentations of your goddess paper with a PowerPoint. And then the last time you give some outlines of what you found. So, um, okay, we'll see. All right. So, Mahira, what did you find? So the goddess I'm inspired with is Artemis and Athena. Uh, so uh, uh, the career that I want to pursue is like to become an entrepreneur because we know that uh, women uh, in Bangladesh and especially in rural sites to be sustainable and to create a glo uh, create something good in the global for the future, uh, they need some economic independence, not for just one uh, themselves, but also for their family as a whole. That's why I have searched on three articles. I will first read the names. Those are, first one is the socioeconomic contribution of women entrepreneurs in Bangladesh. And then, uh, an, and um, study, case study, which is impact of Grameen Bank microcredit program on changing livelihood status of rural women in Panchukar district of Bangladesh. And then another article is women entrepreneurship development in Bangladesh. What are the challenges ahead? Okay. So, uh, so in those, I will talk about like um, garments factories, small medium enterprises, and then what obstacles women are facing that are stopping them or creating a problems in their entrepreneurship or starting a program. Uh, and then uh, what programs on Grameen Bank, what were the situations of rural women before the Grameen Bank microcredit program? And now what are they like, uh, what, how their conditions are improving? Uh, then I want to work, I want to be an entrepreneur and uh, like uh, also work for uh, work like for the rural women in my village also I think uh, such like 10 or 15 uh, group of women go in villages and uh, go in certain they call them and they cook for like mass uh, wedding like in village wedding it happens that they book some women and then uh, pay them and they cook for them like these small small uh, businesses they do uh, like pottery, sewing. So I, I think I want to contribute. I want to create a future that uh, uh, they get economic independence because it is uh, one of the thing which will create a sustainable future for them as well as for country, it is beneficial to them. Very good, okay. Everybody has to clap for Mahira, very good. Um, <laughs> um ma'am the article that i chose is that okay yeah actually have you read them do you want to mention anything or you can mention it next time on the i mean that a week from today a week from today you should go into the particulars more and stuff like that but this is fine for now mm -hmm. um okay is that okay okay um Trin. Yes, Professor. Can you hear me? Yeah, and I please talk, make sure to talk slower because I, I, I do think that I probably don't hear as well or process as fast as the other students, but I really want to understand every word you say. And so you do need to slow down a little. Yes, yes, uh, sure, Professor. So I will, um, in my final paper, I will mark myself as a combination of Athena and Artemis goddess type because I was inspired 
by them uh, enforcing my dream. And I have a desire to become a professional HR manager um, okay. in general area because I would love to work with the people using the social intelligence skills that um, I get it through growing. And in Vietnam, the way of working and communicating in Vietnam, Vietnamese office environment is still lacking in inflexible. And yeah, and they are the distinguish between the superiors and subordinates, even the chain of attacking. So I want to be in that role, um, change the way to how, how people should be work and commun communicate with each other because we are humans on the same page, on the same levels. And I want to a deep connection that people could understand, listen to each other, and which definitely will bring work efficiency for the company. Um, that's the way that drive me to find three articles to support for my, my final paper. But I'm so sorry that I'm not make up my mind at this present. So I will have the presentation for you next week. Is that okay, Professor? Um, did you try? Did you find a few that you decided were not going to work? You know, I'm trying to find more and more, and I'm not make up my mind from which I will choose. choose Wait, for my what did you find, though? Just you can tell us, you you know, what you found. I, I found about the the train trainer economy in the you know Vietnamese office for working, and especially in the HR manager area. That yeah, that I, that I found is trained attacking between women and men in the, the Vietnamese office, that kind of that. Okay, here's another question. In human yeah. resources, in human resources, are, yes. they, are they working on sexual harassment complaints? Is that an, I mean, in the US, if you have a complaint, you send it to HR, you contact HR right away. Is that true in Vietnam? Uh, it's not really professor. It's actually really hard to find in the, you know, in the specific things that, yeah. So I'm trying to find it out. There's, it's not a lot of work. Well, you know, that can be part of your paper that you hope that during your career, that will, yeah, start, yeah okay. That should be part of your paper, really. And, um, Again, if you wanted to look up some article about how it's done in Europe or the US, you can have more than three articles. It's just at least. So that's another one you might be interested in adding. Then another issue is, um, do you remember paid family leave or maternity leave or part-time? Do you remember we talked about how difficult that is? Um, yes. So. Do you want to see if there's anything in Vietnam about juggling family and a career for women? That would be at Human Resources also. Um, yes, I will ask you about that, Professor. Actually, okay. it's, yes, yeah, they are, you were in that problem. Okay, and again, if, if you can't find anything or if literally you find an article that says there's nothing, you yeah. can then look at what there is in Europe or the US, I would say <laughs> Europe, <laughs> and um, say this is something as an HR professional, I would like to bring up and I would like to get changed in my career. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm thank trying you. to think if there's anything else. Um, because HR, you know, I've had students who have gone on to be HR professionals, and I used to teach business ethics. So, of course, you know, that's where a lot of the ethical issues come through HR. Um, so, um, anyway, that's, that's great. I can't brainstorm. I can't think off the top of my head. Um, if anybody else does think of something else... Go ahead and raise your hand. Professor, Professor, can I tell something? So if you 
um, do you already know any resources, really available resources? So would you please to share it to me? <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Pray. The trouble, Trin, is that I would just Google the the same way you would. You, I mean, most you, all my students here are probably better at Googling stuff than I am. Yes. And, um, <laughs> and because everything is online now, it would have to be on Google. Yeah. Um, in my right, in my background, when I was teaching business ethics, there was no internet, and so I had to read books, you know, and buy books. And I still do read and buy books. I've got like 10 books sitting on a table because Amazon, oh. well, Amazon keeps sending me, you might be interested in this based on what you, oh my gosh, they've got me totally wrapped around their finger. But um, so that's why I'm not particularly good. You're better than I am. Um, but any of you can contact me, of course, during office hours and say, you know, uh, ask, do you think this fits in or whatever? I, I honestly think you can make a good judgment, but if you're a little bit concerned about it, that's what I'm here for, yes. you know? So, thank, um, thank you, Professor. Sure. Um, Marzia. She's usually there. So, Marzia? Yes, Professor. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, professor, uh, about my uh, paper, uh, like I, I want to uh, research on the significance and importance of women role in improving, especially in education area, uh, okay. and also, yeah. Uh, 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 because I, I believe that uh, education can help women a lot to have important roles uh, and also significant roles in the society. Uh, and also about an article that you say to bring uh, in the class and talk about, uh, I have found it's not related to Afghanistan because it's so difficult to find uh, related articles, uh, but there is a paper written uh, by a woman, uh, especially in USA, and says that how a woman's role uh, uh, is important and how uh, women contribute to make, uh, in, uh, in, uh, to make a developed country, uh, because uh, the most developed countries, uh, like in compared to developing countries in developed countries, women's role are more uh, significant and also like the education of that the women on that country is uh, better. So, uh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Do you want to talk about K through 12? Do you want to talk about um, contacting mothers to convince them to encourage their daughters? to take school seriously, right? Yes, Professor, uh, because I think it is so necessary if the families uh, realize the importance of education for girls. Uh, but I think uh, one thing is about my country is that it's, yeah, uh, the girls are more affected, but all children are affected somehow. So uh, uh, I really like for it, in, as my career in the future, I really like to work on uh, women empowerment and children education, not only girls education, children education, because uh, I believe that if boys are educated, if men are educated uh, good, they probably will allow women to be educated and they will understand the importance of education in women's life. Okay, so there's one issue is creating a family culture, right? That values education, is it right? Yes, Professor. Okay, another issue is creating a curriculum, right? And yeah. that the content of the curriculum. So people can work very carefully on a curriculum, but if their parents tell them, you're just gonna get married when you're 12, you know, it's, it's not very effective, but 
the curriculum matters. So uh, does the United Nations, well, the United Nations does have a curriculum for sustainability, teaching children about sustainability. Did I yes. give you, yeah, did I give you that link? Um, anyway, I, I do think if I can find it, you can find it. <laughs> um, so the UN has set out this education for international. Um, I'm not I'm not quite sure if it starts all the way in kindergarten. So there's educating, so content, right? So having the content be related to sustainability. Then there's also what sort of intellectual skills that um, students get. And based on your own experience, you all know better than I do, is there a heavy emphasis on STEM and, and not enough emphasis on history, language arts, poetry, um, creativity, right? And yes, so, like that. right. Yeah, it is. And that would be another thing I think you might want to look at, right? In yeah. terms of the content of the education and then the process of the education. So going from memorization to encouraging students to be critical thinkers, right? And so can you develop that at the high school level, right? I, I mean, there's there are educational programs that start their aim at critical thinking, but they start way back, you know, in fourth grade or something. There's a there's a site called Philosophy for Children, if you're interested in looking at that. I actually went to a conference that they sponsored. And just in terms of your career trajectory, right? If you would want to envision someday incorporating that kind of material into your leadership as, a, as an educational professional in developing world, um, so that you could just look flat philosophy for children, you'll find that. And there are a lot of books. I mean, it really was interesting. Um, <clears throat> then there is um, what, what about liberal arts, right? Do you want countries to have more um, liberal arts colleges as opposed to universities where students have to take this variety of classes? So, those are all the issues I can think off the top of my head, right? Uh, yes, Professor. Uh, one thing about the contents of curriculum in education is that uh, uh, in Afghanistan, there is no liberal art education. Uh, so it's different. And the other thing is that nowadays people are mostly in things about STEM, not about humanity majors, uh, because uh, they think the humanity majors do not... Uh, give the opportunity to find a better job which i think that it is uh, it is not a good type of uh, education because humanities are important in our life so yeah it is uh, like the contents of curriculum is important you could you could <coughs> excuse me <coughs> do some statistics some data about how many jobs there are for humanities or liberal arts uh, educated people, because there's all sorts of administrative jobs, like the people who would work at the career services and uh, <clears throat> all sorts of administrative jobs where being educated in psychology or history or whatever is very helpful as you, um, proceed to relate to people and find out, you know, the history each, let students understand that if they want to be effective workers or professionals in their societies, they do need to study the history of their society. Exactly. And also the poetry, the art, so that they start to understand the inner lives of these people that they're dealing with, right? And also like, how can uh, a young person get to know themselves, who they really are, unless, unless they read stories, poetry, essays, where people are 
expressing how they feel, how they think, you know, their hopes, their anxieties, but they're in there on the paper. And so people are reading somebody like them, right? And they're, they're learning how to identify with these. And then they start writing their own essays and poems and things. And so just trying to convince people that you need an education system where people also know themselves, right? And, they, and then they can have empathy with other people. And also they, they develop skills for, first of all, they can become educators. They can become um, human resource type professionals. Uh, and you can actually try to look at all the jobs available to humanities majors um, throughout the world, because there's a lot of data on that that it's not, it, you can get a decent, a good job. And then you need to check sort of, again, you don't have to do it for Afghanistan. You could do it for the region, right? Yeah, uh, yeah you might end up, I don't know if you'd end up in Pakistan or something, but you might end up in Southeast Asia because you went to school there. I have no idea. But if you wanna pick like a region, so what's most likely for, for you? Does that make sense? Yes, Professor, thank you. Okay, yes. sure. Um, Roshani? She's usually there, so I don't know. I'll hope for the, oh, let me see. What is it when you ask to mute, what is it that comes up on your machines? Is it just a tiny, I, <laughs> I wish it were some voice that says, please unmute, you know, <laughs> if she's falling asleep or something. Um, okay, uh, Bristi. Yeah, Professor. Uh, so, can you hear me? Yes. Is it okay? Okay. So uh, in the future, uh, I would like to be a leader for the woman uh, because I think uh, for the lack of guidance, uh, the woman of our locality can do anything to uh, develop their life, I mean, their lifestyle. So um, they know uh, many extra activities uh, except household works uh, like uh, stitching and making dresses then handicrafts work, and someone knows uh, to uh, cook many dishes. So uh, that's why I'm thinking of leading the woman uh, such a way that they become a self-dependent woman. Well, and actually, the goddesses, which one of the goddesses do you identify? Yeah, yeah I'm coming to that. Oh, OK. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so the goddesses I'd like to include into my paper are uh, Demeter, Artemis, and Athena. It would be the combination of these goddesses. Uh, thus, it will uh, help the woman to follow their archetype. And uh, for a research article, I found a research article. It's uh, written on women's empowerment, and which uh, works uh, could increase the uh, empowerment of women. And here, uh, the writer has also uh, mentioned some process uh, for women empowerment by giving the examples of some uh, established women from different countries. And still, I'm reading the article. So, yeah, I'd like to add to it. Okay, so what I'm getting at here is if you Mm -hmm. apply to, to go to a program like a semester abroad or grad school, they won't take you if that's all you say, because it's too general, right? I just wanted you now to get a little more specific. Do you want to, um, everything is women's empowerment, right? Do you want to focus yes. on, um, through education or through the arts or through like the other students have said they've they've narrowed it to something a little more specific 
So do you have an idea of what you would prioritize in this particular paper? I think on the education and I mean, work fields. Education and what? Oh, work fields. I mean, there are so many uh, fields of work for the women. I can train them. So they education, education and career development, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, again, that's very general, right? It has to be, you know, like what kind of career or what would you like to do with education? Like Marzia is focusing on education, becoming an educator. And um, Mahira is focusing on the business sector, right? So do you have an idea of which one you'd want to focus on? Uh, no, Professor. Okay. I think, I, I think that's what I'm sort of asking you to do because um, just to get you a heads up in the future, it might help you in your decision for what classes to take going forward. Um, did you already have an idea of what your major was going to be? Yeah, Professor, I'm thinking of taking bioinformatics. Okay, so what does that, what, is bioinformatics something that would be related to setting up, I don't even know, institutions, public health institutions, or is yeah, that yeah. Is it's related? related to, okay. Yeah, public health institutions. Okay, so then you might want to um, talk about how women can get better educated about their health and their children's health care. Is that, okay. is that? Okay, so I'm trying yeah, to, so you would want to focus on public health and bioinformatics, right? And so you yeah. would want to think about going to wherever you came from. First, you go get your education, grad school, probably you come back. But right now I want you to think about what is already there in terms of empowering women in terms of knowledge about their health, their health care, their children's health and health care, and what definitely you want to move forward. You want to have institutions or an educational program that isn't there now, you know? That's why AUW has these programs. They want you to go from zero to a lot of women out there doing it. So, um, uh, things like, would you want to start uh, women's cooperatives where they come together and spend time and they mainly focus on health or whatever. You can go, go and see what's already there, see what Brock has set up and then add to it, figure out how could I contribute? What sort of institutions might I want to add? or what's so important right where I live that's missing that, that I could actually fix. Does that make sense, Christy? Yeah, Professor, I will narrow down my topic. Okay, and I think probably going to the Brock would help, it would be a good, but you really have to go with the questions that you want answered to. And, yeah. And also, again, bioinformatics, like I don't even know what that is. <laughs> but, but you go online and you can find out what's going on all over the world with bioinformatics. It's exploding as a discipline. How is it being used? How is it, what sort of village level organizations are being set up to communicate with the villagers? You know, there's lots of stuff that I would love to learn about that uh, you probably need to start learning about. So, okay. Um, okay. Okay. Janifa, what would you like to do? Uh, oh, let's see. Okay, so, uh, all right. So Roshani is not feeling good. Uh, Jennifer, good morning. 
Uh, she wants to write about Athena, who had a talent for, for crafts, actually weaving, uh, doing work, okay, economics, women in business. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, let's face, okay. All right, so um, what she's saying is, um, how women are going, oh, this is Melanie, wait a sec. Okay, uh, how women are doing work in, in the economy, business. Um, okay, so um, I, I, again, that's too general. You need something more specific, right? Do you envision uh, in your, where you live setting up an organization or what is already there or what um, NGOs uh, are actually already doing something you would like them to come to where you are. You would like to try and go and work with them for a couple of years and you learn what you need to know so you could go back. Um, so you, you need to be more specific. Um, because it's Athena, you know, is a good strategist, um, but you would, you're not going to be strategizing about war, but you can be strategizing about um, public, changing the public sphere in some way. So um, do you understand what I'm trying to get at, Janifa? Uh, okay, yeah, okay, she said yes, all right. Um, Amina. Uh, yes, Professor. Uh, professor, actually, I didn't even start my topic. I didn't choose yet. Okay, do, did you write your paper on the goddesses? Uh, can you repeat it, Professor? What? Oh, can you? Okay. So, which goddess did you say you identify with? I uh, like I I will write uh, uh, with uh, Artemis and Demeter. Okay. So, how would you attach that to what you plan to do at the moment? I uh, like uh, actually in our team, it's, it's uh, more about independence and also uh, their parents give uh, uh, like parents have to give independent to, the, to their children uh, because if uh, accidentally or they die, what will uh, their children do? Okay, there's that. But she was also a protector of the wilderness, right? Yes, Professor. So I don't know if you want to focus on sustainability organizations locally in your region that focus on that, that you would want to get engaged with, or Demeter is more like children's health or children's education or, right? Yes, please. Okay. So have you had any ideas yet about what you might want to do? Uh, professor, actually, I will write something related to education and as well as independent. Okay. Um, and again, you have to convince the families, like you have to create a culture where parents actually want their daughters to be independent, right? Yes, Professor. That's why, uh, to me, philosophy makes a lot of difference because uh, people really, you know, you have to change their idea of the good, the human good and what's good for their kids. So that's, that's a real toughie. Um, okay, Toma. Yes, ma'am. So, so for my final paper, uh, I mostly inspired the goddess Athena and uh, Aphrodite. Uh, so, uh, and uh, for me, I 
uh, in future i want to be a social worker and uh, through this job uh, i will um, give the opportunities work for women education in my village and also um, women healthcare um, and uh, for uh, giving these opportunities to women i found the organization that mainly working in our community and the organization um, uh, i found is yeah yes ma'am can you hear me now i can yep Yes, ma'am. So, Women Empowerment Organization, where uh, the organization is promoting women's rights and securing child rights. Then also, this organization um, helps women empowerment and RMG workers and protecting ethics. Then uh, it's uh, giving training uh, for um, another uh, opportunities for uh, vocational trainings for children and women. So I believe that uh, through this organization, I can fulfill my dreams and help the women's empowerment. Did you know about the organization before? Yes, ma'am, not to me mostly, but uh, when I search in Google, I found many things about this organization. Good, so you just- And which of... is really good. Yeah, okay. So you knew of it, but you didn't know the specifics, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. so. Why don't you explain how you think a degree in social work will help you going back to further get you know, more engagement with this organization so it has more impact? Yes, ma'am. Um, so you can look up what does a degree in social work give you, right? What tools does it give you and then how Will those tools help you to go back and improve or contribute to and 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 improve that organization? Um, okay, ma'am. Okay, okay. I will. Good, Dolana. Yes, <clears throat> Professor. Good morning. Uh, so. Uh, the goddesses like. Um, uh, Artemis and Athena, uh, uh, like uh, they are inspired me a lot to be uh, like I uh, in the future I want to be a social worker after my graduation, mm -hmm. and I want to work for the women, uh, poor women, uh, like uh, uh, who are like uh, uh, not independent economic economic uh, like uh, financially so i want to support them uh, uh, like uh, support them and uh, want to uh, make them uh, uh, like economically independent and uh, that's why uh, like i i, I choose uh, uh, to article uh, like uh, of organization uh, like gramin bank uh, who is uh, help uh, uh, basically a poor woman uh, like uh, and uh, their economic uh, empowerment and give them a small loan and like uh, like uh, give them training how to be they are economically independent uh, so um, in future, I want to work uh, like uh, for those uh, uh, poor women who are not in economically independent. Okay, and another article, did you find another article? Yes, I, I found two articles, like uh, one is about role of microcredit program in uh, empowering rural women in Bangladesh, a study on Gramin Bank Bangladesh Limited, and the other one is like <laughs> the um, the performance evaluation and impact of Grameen Bank on social development and women empowerment. Okay, good. Did you also want to look at Brock? Because I'm sure they do that too. Yes, uh, they, I, will, I will find out uh, later. 
and Brack also uh, working uh, as a uh, like uh, working uh, for the women who are not economically inter, uh, independent and they give them a small loan and like training uh, or so on. So okay. I want to Right. So here's what you probably should think about. Um, you should get in your mind what Grameen Bank does and what Brock does and how they work together because they definitely know each other. They're all buddies. Um, then why do you think a social work degree specifically would help you or in what ways would that particular degree give you the skills to make the contribution that you want to make, right? Yes, like I want to write about how they are working and uh, how I can I can help the uh, woman like. Uh... Right, I'm just thinking if you're going to apply to grad school for social work and you're from Bangladesh and you know about Brock and you know about Grameen Bank. People are going to have seen this before, so you're going to be specific. Uh, I specifically want social work rather than a business degree or a public health degree or whatever, you know, other ways you could participate in this. I want this, excuse me, a social work degree because this is how I want to plug into that system. And then um, in my village or my region where I came from, these are the issues that I concern me most that I think a social work degree would give me the tools to actually do what I want to do and make the contribution that I think I want to make and that needs to be made. Um, does that make sense, Delana? Yes. Okay, good. Um, you might want to also look up the founder of AUW, because he was a friend of all these guys. And the head, the guy who founded Brock actually um, helped him start AUW. There's a story behind that. His name is Fazel Abed. I'm sure you all have heard his name. But yeah. um, he actually died the second week that I was there. And so there was a huge editorial in the in the newspaper, and I learned a lot, right? But um, if you're interested, because then again, you can relate. I'm from AUW. I understand that the founder of AUW uh, was very connected to these other people, and he founded it precisely for graduates of AUW to get skills to go back and do this work with Grameen Bank and Brock with the same people, right? Just to beef up, right? Get educated people to help them with their programs. So you might, any of you might want to look up that connection uh, because you are living out their dream too. You're living out your dream, but you're also living out what they dreamed you all would care about. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. There, 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 I'm sure there are some AUW students that just want to come and make money and leave, but I doubt that there's very many. I think um, <laughs> it's a young college, and I've been told that the, the alumni of AUW are very supportive. They give back in their time. And I none of them have become too rich yet, but I think there's a lot of reason to think that they'll be very generous. Um, so, so for you to you know, start understanding where you step into this, there was a history behind all of this stuff um, and you were picked as someone who would continue the tradition or let you know follow in what they had the idea about that what what you're passionate about and what they the kind of student they wanted to get really matches 
So if you want to, any of you want to do that, but Delana in particular, that's just what came to mind. Um, does that make sense to you, Delana? Yes. I also want you guys to write this because I want to find out about this, but I don't want to do all the research myself. Um, so you'll have to do it. This is what happens with uh, PhD advisors. They always make their students do the work that they want to get done. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing to you. Um, Kasturi, what have you got? Are you there, Kasturi? Did she? Uh, yes, Professor. So yeah. actually, I have always been driven by uh, the thoughts in the uh, virtues that uh, God is Athena. Okay. Uh, that is Artemis, Demeter, and Hestia uh, for this. Uh, because uh, I think that at some point, I mean, when I read uh, about the virtues that they poses and also the last paper that, uh, last uh, reading that we went through. Uh, that was related to each and every goddesses. I thought that I could relate to these uh, four goddesses. And uh, so basically for my paper, I would like to focus more on uh, education, psychology, and sustainable development. Because uh, I actually went through some articles where it uh, states that uh, psychology, it actually helps in order to achieve um, sustainable development in the place of our existence so um, actually uh, i want to work with kids when i uh, will be grown up because uh, i actually want to be a part of organization that focuses on uh, educating uh, children and i um, i want to actually uh, work on a paper that focuses on psychology because uh, I have been grown up in such an environment where I have seen a lot of kids not being able to perform well in their education and other activities uh, because they are not understood by the people around them and uh, they don't actually get uh, support, you know, uh, mental support from others. And uh, so right now I'm in an organization where kids, they are provided with uh, this uh, psychosocial counseling and uh, also um, as a high school student who pursued uh, psychology, I was really into uh, psychology from then. That's why I would like to focus more on uh, psychology, education, and sustainable development. Okay, good. Um, all right, so any of you, like if you went into social work, you might want to think about uh, also connecting that to psychology, um, I'm. You could say that you would like to start, uh, an, the institutionalization of having a school psychologist in every school, which probably is not there now, but it's something that, that you would like to explore. You would like to study. I teach. I teach philosophical psychology. Um, which is different than the standard stuff. But I think AUW has recently added a psychology program, just a minor. That's why they were having me teach it because they need a lot of class offerings. Um, but if, if you want to think about that, that's another issue. Um, that there's a lot of children obviously who need a psychologist. They need someone to talk to, um, especially orphan children, of course. But there's, um, yeah, the students were, were writing papers about psychology and what they anticipate. Oh, yeah, I remember. One of them, her goal was to try and change the paradigm of how to raise kids and not to uh, violently, right? beat them into shape, right? No, you know, 
harsh punishment because there's so much research that this is not good for a kid. It doesn't develop them. So I think her big sense of mission was to get a degree about child psychology and how to punish children and you know, find out what she knows already in her heart that this doesn't work and then just sort of spread the word and try to educate parents. And that would probably be part of a job of a school psychologist, perhaps, I'm not sure. But that's another possibility some of you might not have thought of. Um, and I mean, everything's good. But I was hoping that, that as you discuss, there'd be a few things that come up that are new that some of the other students might not have even thought of that they could look up and see. I think I wanna change my paper to this. So I do think you should be prepared to say, I wanna change my life. I don't, I changed my mind from what I said in Professor Beck's class, that's fine. It's just that you know what you need to do to sort of find out what do I really want um, and how do I do the research about it? So that's great, Kasturi. Thank you. Uh, Fatima? Uh, sorry, Professor. Sorry to interrupt. So is there anything that you would like to suggest me in order to write my paper? Actually, oh, to write your paper. Actually, I should send you some of the, some of the papers that the students in that class wrote. Because um, mm -hmm. then they would, they have the sources in those papers, okay? Um, okay, Professor, that okay. would be really useful. Yeah, okay, I just have to remember. And you can send me an email to remind me to send me the Lion College email because that's, I always go there a lot. Um, okay, thank you, Kasturi. That was, that was a good idea. Uh, Fatima? All right, let's see. I got to see how many messages I have here. Um, Soda, okay. Okay, she has to leave. Yeah, that's fine. She's going to look at the recording. That's fine. Um, all right. Um, Jacinta, yeah, I will. Okay, I'll check that you came. Um, couldn't hear your voice. Okay, can't hear me traveling. Oh, okay, so uh, Melanie is traveling and isn't getting good service. Um, so, Janifa, Athena. Um, okay, so Melanie. Are you there, Melanie? Are you going to be able to present or should I just read this? Okay. I'm going to focus my essay on women in business and the inequalities we still face. So here's American women. Um, but European women have it better than American women. But anyway, she wants to own a business eventually. It's still hard for women to reach the top of the management chain. She wants to include an article that explains the inequalities that women still face, including pay, uh, compensation for extra hours, lack of opportunity, lack of respect. Uh, I want to look at the percentage of sexual assaults against women in business because it's very common in the US. Um, actually, another thing I really want to emphasize to you is that, that you need to find a mentor, like somebody in, in the place you work who is above you, who really wants to mentor you and tell you, this is what it's like around here. Don't offend this person too much. Make sure you say that, you know, and then that person has the power to sort of recommend you for promotion, right? Or, uh, you know, if you don't get along with them, but that's a real problem for women because the higher you go, the more it's just men and men don't identify with a woman. 
And so they can't find these really intimate sort of relationships with somebody above them who super identifies with them. And this again is where AUW comes in because now, now that AUW has been around for 12 years, it's going to have graduates who are back in the work um, in the work world, and now they will have worked. By the time you all get through grad school or whatever, they will have worked for almost a decade. And so there's gonna start to be networking. And um, that'll be really important for you if you can work at a place where there's an AUW grad and she'll be kind of your mentor. Or if there's an AUW grad that has contacts in other places, and AUW has established itself as having a good reputation. So you want to take an AUW grad. And so you guys all have to live up to the reputation of the school, but that'll give you that in, right? And that helper, which is really important. Um, I didn't have that and I really suffered a lot, but we hired, Lion hired someone to take my place as I start to phase the retirement and my colleague. So I've had one other person I've worked with for 18 years, but he is mentoring. We're both mentoring this guy in and my gosh, it's so easy for him. Oh my gosh, which I'm very happy for him. But oh boy, I did not get any of that stuff. And it caused me a lot of anxiety about whether people like me, am I gonna be able to keep the job? Why don't I get these feedback? Um, yeah, it was horrible. So I do think, you know, keep an eye out for, just remember, and, and I'm sure in grad school, they'll tell you this, that you need to find a mentor. Um, and then there will be teachers in your area of, once you start majoring, I'm sure there'll be teachers with contacts. So getting yourself into the networks is good. Um, oh, okay, her roommate. Her roommate is sick and sleeping. So this is Fatima. Like to focus um, in women in education because they're not getting equal rights in advanced education. Um, okay. So be Athena, Artemis, and Demeter. Um, oh, okay, Roshani has appeared. <laughs> Let's see, where is she? I don't see her. All right, so Roshani, I will give you your turn. Oh, there you are. Okay, I guess I'll go back to Roshani. We, I think we're gonna make it, well, we have time for everybody. So go ahead, Roshani. Okay, thank you so much, Professor. Uh, okay, so my paper, uh, I actually reflect myself as an Apollo character, Apollonian. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'll be focusing on Apollo and then Artemis because I find myself courageous who, uh, you know, love to raise voice and stand like a strict kind of thing. So uh, I'll be focusing on Apollonian, uh, Artemis, and then Demeter. Okay. So uh, I choose this three, like I personally wanted this, but um, I, uh, you know, these are like uh, three different things. So uh, the way I wanted to make it since um, I am so much into music and arts. So I think uh, arts and uh, art thing or skilled thing can um, actually empower women and can do something that they can actually earn or, you know, they can actually live on their livelihood by their own. So I was focusing on the articles where women can um, actually uh, get empowered by the arts, by their skilled uh, thing. So I will take an examples of uh, some of the uh, celebrities who actually um, um, get empowered by their arts, by their talent, by their uh, dreams that they wanted to have, uh, like a singer or somewhat. And I'll also choose the universities that are focusing on, we, not just focusing on women education, but the arts like um, arts uh, and other uh, 
skilled uh, that women should possess. And um, I'm focusing on an article where women's uh, art and uh, women's like, uh, where women's are empowered by their arts and craft, uh, these things, Professor. But at the same time, uh, looking at the um, reflection, there was something related to education, but uh, I didn't want to, you know, since I did, uh, education is important, but I didn't want to connect with it. Uh, initially, I thought of connecting it between uh, education and arts, but I think that would be too uh, lengthy or two different sides. So I was thinking of focusing on only on arts, but uh, <laughs> I'm not still ab like able to uh, get art. I found few, but not like, uh, you know, the very specific. Um, so this is, I think, Professor. <laughs> Okay, so you're from Nepal, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so you could look at what sort of opportunities are there for women to get degrees in music, right? Or art, painting, are there programs? Um, um, yes, in now finally there, it's not just for women, even for men, there were not much uh you know dig uh, there are not much good universities or things for music arts thing it's for it's for all gender actually but now it has slowly grown like slowly developed that uh women's uh and uh, everyone can uh, get it but um but one bad thing is that women are very discouraged to go in to this kind of field, like they are said, like you cannot do anything here. What's the point of you in learning music, or what's the point of you learning in the arts thing? Because there's nothing that uh, you know benefits you in this kind of field. So I kind of feel like <laughs> sad about it, and wanted to write something on that. Women on arts can actually be empowered, and women's uh, following their arts and passion can actually uh, do something for themselves. Well, in your lifetime, it should change quite a bit, right? Yeah, by now it has a bit changed. Okay, so what you need to look at is, um, well, first of all, you look at the celebrities. Did they go to school? Did they get degrees or did they just have talent and they just go online and they perform and it works out, right? Mm -hmm. The school, school. I mean, school in a sense of academic school or the other one. Whatever. Is there an art school? Are there academic schools? Um, you know, or is are celebrities just they just started singing or they just started dancing and that was kind of it? Um, and then are there music and arts programs in the university? So you would. If you want to be an artist, you could also get a degree in arts education and become an educator and be able to be creative and teach at the same time. Is there much of that? Mm, now slowly it's developing to that extent that uh, where we actually can get a degree. Initially it was, there was not, but now there has been uh, such kind of thing. But only the problem is the, um, uh, like in a demeter regarding family, regarding um, family's responsibility, regarding family's prestige, and for, uh, like it is always said that uh, there's nothing other um, good career as you as education and uh, you know economy or finance. That there's no any good career than. Uh, science, no any education, uh, like no any career than educating in schools, like formal education and so on. It is said, usually said that. So people itself get discouraged in going to the music so, schools or schools for arts. Well, actually, you could find out about, first of all, what AUW students have actually pursued degrees in the arts. And the Career Center might have some data on that. Um, because you have to think about, you know, where would I apply to grad school, right? And then um, uh, what would I, what sort of training would I want to get in grad school? What would I want to go back to Nepal? Can I work with NGOs? Are there NGOs or uh, government? You know, is the government starting to support this? 
NGOs, the United Nations, is there any way for you to start something or, or to make a substantial contribution to what's just starting out right now? Mm. <laughs> okay, professor. Does that make sense? There, no, I guess. Yes. Yeah, okay. It well, does. because AUW does have this arts component, it undoubtedly, you could even contact some of the, the teachers who teach performance or theater or something and ask them about have they had any students that have gone on and where do they go and and do the teachers think that the countries like Nepal, Bangladesh are going to actually start creating a, you know, a small sector, but um, they're going to start nurturing artistic creativity and talent and educating the public in these things. Is that okay, Roshan? Yes, Professor. Okay, I'm just trying to think of it in terms of your future, you just sort of start planning ahead to see where this can go. Mm. Um, okay. Yeah. Sounds great to me. Um, Habiba. Yes, Professor. Professor, uh, I didn't start yet. My professor. Hello, Professor. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Uh, as professor in the future, uh, I want to uh, I want to take a public health major. So in the future, I would like uh, to uh, to help my community like uh, who are suffering uh, different kind of uh, disease. And like I also I want to give and like that speech and uh, how to how we have to save. Uh, from the DGs, from different kind of DGs, like this. I went to, uh, yes, I went to, I went to take public health major in the future. Then I, I would like to work on it. Okay, so um, you should do research again. AUW, I'm sure, is well, well connected to graduates studies in that area because it's got a huge program right at AUW. So you can find out what programs do the AUW students tend to go into, what graduate programs. And then you, and you can also find out what sort of placements do they have. They probably a number of them are already placed in jobs and they're starting their work. And you could um, the Career Studies Center might actually give you some addresses of them to contact them. Um, but you could also find out what are the possibilities for public health, like what sort of places can they work? Um, are there women's empowerment organizations? Are there women's, are they just hospital related organizations? Are they? in the more rural towns where there's no hospitals, where does public health take place, right? And then um, is there also a major component of educating women so that when they go home and when they're running their household, you don't just wait for somebody to get sick and then you know, fix them and send them right back to a house where they're gonna get sick again right you try to i would imagine that you're a major component of that is also changing the climate like helping them figure out yes perfect. yes perfect. Okay. so um so to finding some articles about that would be really helpful and i would like learning about that because i know there's a lot of majors at a okay. yeah that would be great um and i think the rest of us would all be interested because it's, ma it's a major thing. And those of, those of you who are majoring in education or in psychology or in social work would also wanna find out what's going on with public health because 
eventually it seems like all of you would be working together or at least you would be networked you would sort of know what each other are doing in any sort of regional local area um does that sound okay habiba yes professor thank you okay um I, you know it's just about time we have five minutes is there anybody that hasn't spoken yet uh, Jacinta, I think you sent me one. I can't remember. Did you? Yes, have you spoken yet? Not yet. Go ahead. Okay, Professor. Uh, um, professor, I'm thinking about women business leaders in Bangladesh. Uh, so uh, Mm, I'm focusing uh, on the goddess is uh, uh, Artemis mm, and for uh, women business leaders, especially uh, UNDP uh, is working in Bangladesh. And so I am um, um, focusing uh, uh, UNDP uh, as an organization that how is uh, how they are uh, helping uh, women and making Women leaders. Um, what what's the, and, name, what's the name of the organization? UNDP. UN Development DP. Project. UN Development Project. Yes, Professor. Okay. So and uh, and um, uh, I uh, and uh, in the in this field, women how they are a uh, contributor. Uh, to develop uh, the business uh, by leading uh, and women how impact uh, economy and family uh, and to what type of business uh, they do uh, and how uh, are they are developing their lifestyle and economically independent so i'm uh, i will um, discuss uh, 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 in my research paper, all this information. Okay, actually, what you also need to do is talk about how the UNDP works with the Grameen Bank and Brock, right? Because they must work together quite a bit, right? Okay, Professor. Um, they must be very aware of what each other are doing and maybe they've figured out who's going to specialize in what or maybe literally the you know the UN provides funding for something that Brock is doing I don't know but it would be nice to know it would be um, I would like to know that and I think the other students would probably like to know that too um, all right I think we're we're just about done we have one minute or something um, Sauda, let's see, couldn't hear your voice. Let's see, um, Fayaza, that's all right. I mean, you can, I hope you can listen to the tape and then that'll work out okay, I think. Is there anybody else who wants to speak here? We have two minutes left. Um, okay, well, uh, I look forward to hearing about your papers, right? You're going to give formal paper PowerPoint for the next class about the goddess's paper. And I think most of you, I hope, are finished with it. And I did explain, I think I explained, it's going to take me a while to read them because I'm going to visit my daughters for Thanksgiving. And then I'm driving down to Lyon College to meet with students there for final week of classes and then finals week and then the faculty has a big party <laughs> at the end um, and then I'll drive back to Minnesota so I'll be you know sort of I think when I'm in Arkansas I'll be able to start reading your papers but there is going to be you know uh, you aren't going to hear back from me for a while perhaps I have tried to keep up with most of them I think I have a few that were handed in four days ago, but I think I've kept up with most of them. And I'll try to read all the ones that were handed in before 
the 20, the 20th. I got just a ton of them on the 20th. So I had papers due in both classes. But if you handed it in, you know, quite a while ago, it might have been late, whatever. I'm hoping I can get those read. And then you'll just have to, you'll have to just be patient. It might take <clears throat> up to two weeks. And since I never graded you down, <laughs> if you handed in something two weeks, I hope you don't grade me down and get annoyed with me. Um, I got to see my, I got to see my family here. Okay, take care. It's time to go. If you want to um, stay and ask a question, that's fine. Stop the recording.